the mist and the mouth is not in the walls. And we will first have a the majesty. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Amen. We're going to ask you to turn with us to Colossians chapter 1. So I'll have it on the screen. Colossians chapter 1, we're going to read verses 21 through verse 80 and 80. And enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Look at verse 23. It says, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. I want to use for a thought kind of as a part two from last week. Uh, we looked at Brother Peter's struggle and uh, the attempt uh, on his faith. Today I want to use for a subject, there is hope after this look at your neighbor and say neighbor there's hope after this amen eternal father in the name of jesus we thank you for your grace and for your mercy we thank you lord for your visitation lord we ask you to bless us right now anoint the speaker lord let all flesh be put asunder oh god oh god we pray against distractions right now lord let us receive lord manna from on high lord the word that you have for us to receive on today and we pray that we're fed oh god in fact Lord, with your spirit and with your word on today, bless us right now. In Jesus' name, we pray, oh God, the saints are edified and the sinners are saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. There is hope after this. Today, uh, many are uh, celebrating Resurrection Sunday. And there's much, uh, really there's much wrapped up in, uh, in his resurrection. But one important item to note in his resurrection uh, means the restoration of hope. The restoration of hope. Everyone uh, should have hope in a resurrected Jesus Christ. Everyone should have some hope. Everyone needs uh, food. And everyone needs water. Uh, everyone needs uh, air to breathe or else we will die. Uh, and so likewise, everyone needs hope in a risen savior in the person of jesus christ amen that's where our hope should lie or else we will uh, die a spiritual death uh, if we don't have hope in christ jesus hope is is confidence hope uh is faith it's it's confident expectation uh of eternal salvation and that's what my hope lies that's where it is it's not uh, in man, it's not in this world, but uh, uh, my hope is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so the people that were a part of the first resurrection, the saints there, they knew all about the need for hope in order to be able to continue on. Uh, they had knelt there at the feet or at the foot of the cross, watching uh, the one who had carried all their hopes. Amen. They stood there and they saw the one who carried their hopes and their dreams die on a cross. And they had listened as he said, Father, into your hands. He says, I commit my spirit. They heard those words and then they saw him bow down and or bow his head for the last time. This is what uh, the believers had seen that day. Amen. And their guts had wrenched in tears, I believe, but probably rushed down the cheeks of the believers as the Roman uh, soldiers plunged the spear into the side of Jesus Christ. Amen. Which probably then removed all doubt that Jesus had died. Amen. So here they followed those who carried his tomb. And, amen. And when they had heard uh, the resounding sound of the rock, uh, rolling up against the stone of the tomb there amen many of the disciples that had hope now their hope was dead their hope was sealed in a borrowed tomb amen sealed behind amen a place that they could not long no longer see amen they knew what it was like to be hopeless amen they knew what it was like and some of you may know 
uh, that same feeling of hopelessness. Some of you may have uh, at some point in time experienced uh, a hopelessness feeling in your own life. When you look at your own marriage, you see maybe only uh, despair there. And when you look at uh, your children, maybe you think even though whether young or old, amen, you look and wonder what kind of future they may have given the circumstances of their life, amen. You, you think about these things, you wonder what kind of future they'll have. When you consider your life and you look at the mistakes that uh, maybe you've made in the walk of life, amen, you have to consider your life and, and think about the mistakes, amen. And sometimes we're tempted, amen, only to come to a place of giving up hope. Amen. That anybody could ever love you and anybody could ever treat you, amen, like you're somebody or like you are something special. It loses, causes you to sometimes lose hope. Amen. Think that you have no uh, uh, future. Think that you have uh, no way of life. Amen. Loss of hope is a place of despair. Amen. And this is where I believe that the apostles were on this resurrection uh, day, man, before the resurrection. They were at a place where they were at a loss for words, confused, confounded in their mind, wondering what had happened, what went wrong, why did it work out like we thought it would, amen. We saw him pierced in his side. We saw him placed, amen, uh, on, a, on a cross. We saw him placed in a tomb and we saw it sealed with a stone that rolled in front of it, amen. Hope was lost, amen, during this season. But this morning, church, my goal is for us is that we will experience the same restoration of hope that the apostles experienced, amen, uh, during the first century saints time because they came to the tomb, amen, and heard the words that Jesus is not here, amen, that heard the words that he is risen and just as he said, amen, and so it would be a day that they discovered that there is hope after this, amen, when everything looked bleak, when everything seemed like uh, it was at a total loss, there was some hope that was found when Jesus rose from the dead. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so whatever you're going through or whatever you've done does not need to destroy you. It doesn't need to even steal your joy. Amen. You don't even give it that kind of authority or power. Amen. I want to encourage us all today that there is hope after this. Amen. There is hope after this. There's a story about a little boy that I read and he was playing baseball one day by himself and he went outside and, and he had a ball in the bat and he had his baseball cap on and he goes out in his backyard and he says, I'm the greatest hitter of all time. Amen. So he takes his ball and he tosses it up in the air. And any of y'all used to do that with your bat? You, know, you toss the ball up and you try to hit it and he tosses it up and the little boy looks at that ball and he swings and misses and he says, oh, strike one to himself. And then he goes and takes the ball again and he says once again he says I'm the greatest hitter in the world he tosses the ball up the ball comes down again he's got his eye on it he misses again strike two the little boy cries out third time he spits on his hands gets his hat straightens it up gets his footing good and set in the ground he tosses the ball up the third time it comes down strike three he missed again so he thinks about it and he looks and he says to himself wow I'm the greatest pitcher of all time what happened there? Children are full of hope. Children have hope. But somewhere along the line, they start to hear and believe lies. And so it causes us, causes them uh, to then begin to, to, to cast a cloud of doubt over their hope. Lies like you're no good. Lies that man like no one wants to be your friend. You might as well just go under a rock and die somewhere. Lies that, that, that creep up into the ears, amen, of, of the hearing. The folks that say things like your only, your only value is in what I can get out of you. You're not worth anything to me. Lies that we believe that, that when we were kids, when we had hope, is slowly over time deteriorated and, and walked down and, and stepped on because of a loss of hope. And so believing these type of lies, amen, will cause you uh, to lose hope, amen. If that's what you're being programmed to hear, if that's what you're hearing day after day, man, it can cause you to lose hope. The truth is that every one of you really has value, amen. That's what the devil doesn't want you to know that everybody under the sound of my voice today, you've got some value. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you have value. You have value. You have potential. 
Amen. And that's what we need to know. You are made in the image of God. That's what the Bible says. You, you are made in God's image and everything I know God created. Amen. The Bible says he said it's good. Amen. So when you look at your neighbor, you, have to, you got to declare that it's good. Amen. Amen. It's good. You are, the Bible says, the apple of God's eye. Uh, so now I know when you know these things, when you know this and see the truth in it, it should give us hope. Amen. Well, before you met Jesus, maybe you didn't, you weren't aware of the hope that you had. But, but there's hope here, amen. There's hope after this, amen. People uh, are looking for hope today, but they're looking in all the wrong places for hope. People are, are, are believing in things that aren't true. False hope, uh, false hopes are probably worse than really having no hope at all. Because when you believe in a false hope, false hope falls crashing to the ground. And then it, and then it makes you think that there's no secure place to have hope. So that's what the devil wants us to think. Amen. We create false hope. You, you heard of things that, of people that have risen up, amen, to power. And people would have hope in these folk. Amen. But then these folks would let them down. And so now everybody's in the same category. Amen. Everybody went and drank the Kool-Aid. Amen. And, and so now you've lost faith in all kind of Christianity. Amen. Because of one bad place of false hope. Amen. So we have to understand that our enemy, the devil, will try to do one of two things in your life. One, he will either make you think that life is hopeless. Make you think. There's some folk that all they can see is the negativity in life. All they can see is the bad. All they can see is the darkness. Amen. Because they only see those things uh, uh, as hopeless things. But the second thing the devil will try to do, he'll get you to think that hope is found in things in the world. Amen. So either either you, he wants you to think that everything is hopeless or he's going to try to get you to place your hope in something that's not really there. Amen. So we got to realize your hope can't be in the government. It can't be even in mama and daddy. It can't be in grandma because we're all only human. We can only do so much. My capacity as a man only goes so far. Amen. My pockets are only so deep. Amen. But we serve a God who stretches beyond imagination serve a God that's telling us today that there's hope after this uh, amen so I believe this is why Paul sounds the alarm in the book of Colossians and, and lets us know that he says if you then be risen with Christ seek ye those things which are above he says where Christ sitteth he says on the right hand of God and then he tells us to set our affections on things uh, he says above not on things on this earth he says for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and so I understand now my hope is in spiritual things my hope is in eternal things it's not in material things it's not in people places amen and things of this earth my hope is in a resurrected savior somebody shout hallelujah so God, I'm so glad, has revealed the mystery to us that there's no real hope found in the things of this world. There's no hope, amen, in the things of this world because it's really all fading away with everything in it. It's fading away. Things are, are going to be uh, destroyed. Things are, are going to pass away, man. And, but there's a place where you can find a real source of hope, amen, a real source of hope. Some place where you can securely place your hope. Some place where you can securely place your faith and your belief. And Paul tells us in verse 23, he says, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. And that's where we are today. Amen. Understanding that there's hope after this. Where I'm in now, there's hope after it. Whatever I'm struggling with now, there's hope after this. Amen. And so hope of the gospel is the life, is the death. It's the burial and it's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, I've got some hope because I believe Jesus got up. Amen. Didn't allow death to hold him. Didn't allow a man to keep him there, but he rose with all power. And so understand that if I'm going to have hope, amen, we have to understand there's some things that come along with having hope. And one of those things is suffering. Suffering comes when you got hope in a savior, amen. And one of the things that threatens to steal your hope is suffering. Suffering, amen, comes to all mankind, everybody in here some way form or fashion you've suffered in some sort of capacity suffering has been a part of what it means to be human ever since sin entered into the world amen amen even though jesus paid for our sins on the cross with his own blood suffering amen is still present with us amen until jesus comes back for his bride 
And so, amen, I, we got to understand it's, it's bound to happen. It's bound to, to rise its, its nasty little head up out the grass and, and try to strike you. Amen. But I'm glad that while we're here, Paul gives us a solution, amen, to dealing with suffering even though we've got hope. He tells us that. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's why I want to know Jesus. Amen. I'm glad to know about his life. I'm glad to know about his death and his burial but i'm so glad amen that i may know him one day in the power of his resurrection lets me know that because jesus got up one day i'm gonna get up too hallelujah i wonder if there's anybody else in here today that, that's waiting on the, a resurrection my god and so philippians teaches us uh, to have total amen dependence on him amen how many of you have been through circumstances where you knew amen that you couldn't have made it through without jesus christ you knew amen i couldn't have made it through this thing without the lord on my side how many of you ever had to deal with a situation so dreadful so bad amen where you were even at the brink of giving up amen but jesus stepped in and gave you some comfort just in the nick of time amen so so understand you have some hope amen but you also have some suffering that came along with it and i really believe that suffering assures us uh, that we really belong to christ amen suffering is what lets you know amen that you are a part of the body of christ amen how do you know john tells us he says jesus said that we should expect persecution and we should expect some suffering amen why pastor why do i have to suffer if i'm a child of god amen why do i have to go through some things amen if i'm living right amen we've got to understand if they persecuted Jesus you are gonna be persecuted too uh, amen he promised them that they would they would be persecuted amen told us to be careful and watch out that's why it says watch and pray amen because times will change and seasons will shift and you're gonna have to learn how to adjust but you got to learn to keep your hope amen somebody shout hallelujah so that's what Paul is talking about in verse 24 when he says that, that he had to fill up Christ's afflictions here. He, it wasn't that Jesus' death and resurrection wasn't sufficient to pay for Paul's or even our salvation. It was that the world continues to pour out its hatred towards Jesus Christ. Uh, and we're still seeing it today. Amen. And so this is why uh, uh, you've got to understand suffering's going to come. Uh, amen. Jesus, amen, had to endure some things. He had uh, folks that hated him and, and this is why you have some haters amen you've got haters they hated jesus and, and the moment you step out of your your house and, and, and walk in your yard and declare that i'm a believer I, I believe in jesus amen guess what you probably gonna have some haters uh, amen somebody man hating uh, uh, on the faith and the hope that you have uh, and so understand jesus had haters and you are gonna have them too amen everybody isn't gonna be tooting your horn everybody's not gonna be patting you on the back everybody isn't gonna amen be all celebrating amen with the hope that you have but but just understand that, that this is gonna go on and it's gonna continue until one day when god makes this decision that the cup is full enough amen and his judgment is then poured out upon this world uh, amen that's why you gotta understand that you gotta go through and endure some stuff amen suffering amen it takes a man uh itself it attacks a man uh the enemy that confirms that that you are part of god's family amen understand that if you're suffering it's a privilege understand if you're suffering amen it's really a blessing to, to suffer than not to suffer at all that's for some mature folks right there. So, amen, suffering, I believe, changes believers. Uh, and it produces hope within us. Uh, that's what suffering does, amen. It really fills up my hope tank, uh, amen. It lets me know because when I suffer, God brings me out, uh, amen. My hope uh, lets me know, amen, that God delivered me once before and he'll deliver me once again. Uh, Paul lets us know as he preaches in Romans chapter 5 and he tells us therefore being justified by faith uh, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ uh, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace uh, and he says wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God uh, and so Paul lets us know that your hope your faith in Jesus Christ uh, it grants you access into God's grace uh, oh my God uh, oh isn't it lovely to know that you have a 
mechanism uh, that grants you access into God's grace. Uh, oh, when you go home, you got to have a key to get into your house. Uh, it gives you access. Uh, You've got to have a garage door opening with a button to push uh, that sends a signal to the receiver uh, in order for the door to go up for you to get access. Uh, but I'm here to tell you today, church, uh, it's God's grace, amen, uh, that's activated by your own hope uh, that gives you access into the grace of God. Uh, somebody ought to shout, I've got access. I've got access today. My God. So it's God's grace. It's God's favor. It's God's goodwill towards you. Amen. And your, because of your hope that not only helps you, but it helps you to get through your trouble. My God, I need help every day. But I need help to get through my trouble. Oh, that's why I'm glad he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, it's this grace that enables you to glory. It's what Paul says. It enables you to boast amen or rejoice during our times of trouble huh? that's really what God wants from us huh? when you're going through a man he wants to see huh? do you still have joy huh? he wants to see when you're suffering huh? ah, ah do you still have love and hope for him huh? wants to see when all hell's broken loose huh? ah do you still trust me huh? ah do you still trust him today that's because you've got access huh? to this grace. Uh, I read an article uh, about some lab rats, amen. I read an interesting scientific uh, experiment uh, uh, that was co conducted on some lab rats at Duke University, and it was pretty interesting. And, and the lab rats uh, uh, were placed, amen, into several groups, uh, behavioral groups there. Uh, and these scientists uh, had put some what they called wharf rats. They took some wharf rats and they put them in a tank of water. They filled the tank up and they, they put the rats in there. And they began to observe to see how long they would survive before uh, they would drown and so the rats are in the water they're skipping and, and trying to hover and trying to stay afloat amen and so the average time for the rats was about 17 minutes before the rats drowned and died and, and so they then uh, the scientists got an idea they repeated the experiment amen they, they, they got they did the same thing but this time they took a group of rats and they put them in the tank but they rescued the rats and they, and right at, before they would drown they pulled uh, the rats out right at the point of drowning and they dried the rats off and, and they returned them to their cages and they fed the rats and, and then they let them play for a few days and, and then they took the same rats and they put them back in the tank to repeat the experiment but this time the average survival time for the rats uh, it increased from 17 minutes uh, to 36 hours and, and so this baffled the, these scientists and they're trying to figure out how uh, did these rats that, that drowned in 17 minutes the first group uh, and the second group we pulled them out we pampered them a little while we let them play and we fed them and we put them back how could they last 36 more hours and, and so the scientists explained that the phenomenon by pointing out that the second time around the rats had hope they, they felt the rats had hope. They believed that they could survive this because they had done it before. The rats was in there thinking, well, well we, 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 they pulled us out last time. Somebody's got to pull us out again. And so when you're faced with a situation, saints, and it threatens to steal your hope, just look back. And say, God did it before. He can do it again. He healed me once before. He'll heal me again. He blessed me once before. He'll bless me once again. You made it through those times, church. God is still the same as he's ever been. And his power is still available for you today. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so just as, uh, as the first set of lab rats lost hope and, and only survived 17 minutes before they drowned, we, we find that the apostles of Christ Jesus here now, uh, they're drowning in doubt and they're drowning in despair over the death of Jesus Christ. They're kicking and they're trying to, to stay afloat. They're trying to still have some hope, amen, but they're drowning. And, and so you find the 12 apostles hiding out now. Uh, and no doubt Peter is upset with himself now and, and mentally wounded amen that he denied Jesus Christ three times as it was prophesied to him Peter needed something Peter needed a spark of hope to help him get back on track and so he needed to understand that there's hope 
after this. Uh, and so here they are now, the disciples are in hiding, and Jesus has been uh, buried, and now, amen, the world is in an uproar, and amen, the Romans are, are trying to still make sure the body isn't going to be stolen, and, and the believers are still doubting and wondering, will and what will happen, amen, in three days, amen, but they had to understand Peter, amen, had done what only hours before had been the unthinkable, amen, just hours before he had done what was be called the unthinkable, he committed an offense against Christ by denying him that he knew him, Jesus had done only good to Peter, he only treated him good, amen, he treated him nice, amen, and showed him love, amen, asked him, he says, do you love me, Peter, he says, then feed my sheep, uh, spent time with Peter, amen, Jesus had only done him good, he healed his mother-in-law, amen, healed Peter's mother-in-law, only showed him good stuff, and allowed him to see him transfigured there with Peter, James, and John, amen, so Peter had special relationship with Jesus, Jesus had inspired Peter to believe he could be more than he ever thought he could be himself, uh, amen, and that's what Jesus gives all of us, hope, amen, that you can be more than what you were, I'm too glad today, uh, because if you're sitting under the sound of my voice, uh, you were somebody that was a nobody, uh, oh, that's right, uh, oh, yes, uh, some of you were drug infested folk, uh, some of you were alcoholics, uh, some of you were thieves and robbers, uh, oh, but he came and gave you some hope, uh, that there's hope after this, uh, that you didn't have to stay where you are, uh, didn't have to lie in the mess you was in, uh, he gave you uh, gave you some hope. Uh, so he allowed Peter uh, to see him transfigured. Uh, he inspired him. Uh, taught him uh, how to conduct yourself uh, as a saint of God. Uh, no doubt Peter suffered uh, from shame. Uh, he suffered from self-condemnation. Uh, he probably played in his mind day after day. Uh, he told me uh, Peter, uh, Simon, Simon. Uh, he says Satan desired to have you. Uh, to sift you as wheat. Uh, he probably played it over in his mind night after night. Uh, every time his head hit the pillow. Uh, he probably heard that voice. Uh, he says Peter. Uh, he says but I prayed for you. Uh, he probably heard that voice. Uh, time and time again. Uh, he would never be the same. Uh, you can understand how he must have felt. Uh, couldn't escape the memory uh, of that precious night uh, and so now uh, Peter we find out uh, he would get the spark that he needed uh, oh my god uh, because that day uh, that Easter day uh, uh, the women went to the tomb uh, to see about the body of Jesus uh, and they found the stone uh, was rolled away uh, my god and the tomb was empty uh, and they're told by two angels uh, why seek ye the living uh, amongst the dead uh, he's not here he is risen and so the women run back my god and he told the story to the apostles they told him about the empty tomb and the 11 but the other disciples didn't believe my god it was just too incredible ah the memory of everything it was just too great in other words don't play with me ladies i can't take it again don't mess with my mind we saw him stretched wide we saw him hung High. We saw the blood and the water gush out. We saw a crown of thorns placed on his head. We saw the nails in his hand. We saw the nails in his feet. Don't play with me. Tell your neighbor, don't play with my hope. It's too precious. So now Peter seems to have decided something must have happened at the tomb that day. And so he determined to find out just what happened. And so the Bible says Peter and John raced to the tomb, headed straight there. And the tomb, Peter discovers it to be just as the women said. The body was gone. The stone was rolled away. The garments were there. How? Where? How could he have done it? So now on, later on that great day, the first Easter, Peter has his hope restored. He begins to have a glimmer of hope because he's starting to remember what Jesus said. Three days and I'll rise again with all power. I believe Peter started to get happy. I believe Peter started to have hope. 
Peter saw Jesus uh, even though uh, the Bible doesn't say uh, what was done uh, or the conversation uh, doesn't say what happened uh, it just says he was seen of Cephas uh, he was seen of Peter uh, I believe Peter realized uh, there's a hope uh, after this uh, I believe Peter uh, got a stern up uh, of his gift uh, I believe uh, Peter realized uh, it is so uh, every word he said uh, it's coming to pass. Uh, everything he told me, uh, it's got to happen. Uh, so Peter's hope uh, was restored uh, by the resurrection of Christ. Uh, there is hope uh, after this. Uh, this is the place of failure. Uh, this is the place of despair. Uh, this is the place uh, of a loss of hope. Uh, but I'm here today. Uh, there's hope uh, after this. Uh, Peter went back. Uh, to Jerusalem, my God, on the day of Pentecost, he preached repentance, he preached baptism in Jesus' name, he preached the infilling of the Holy Spirit, he preached the gospel at Cornelius' house, and they all received the Holy Spirit and got baptized in Jesus' name. I've got to wrap this up, but Peter found out there's hope, there's hope after this when you've given up hope when you think all is lost thanks to the living God when it looks like you're getting ready to go over the edge of life remember Jesus rose for you he got up and had all power there's an empty tomb and a risen savior he got up the situation may look bleak the deck may be stacked against you the devil himself may be at an all-out war against your life but hold on don't give up there's hope after this you be got to understand because he lives i can face tomorrow because he got up i can see a new day you don't have to be weak you don't have to fall you don't have to quit you can live without fear you can accomplish your destiny you can be victorious you can conquer your enemies you can do it give your neighbor a high five and say it can be done you can be healed you can be set free satan is a loser oh death where is that sting oh grave where is your victory you thought you had him but you lost it thought you had him in your clutches he got away he didn't just leave her he conquered sin he conquered death he conquered the grave death is swallowed up in the victory of christ death is swallowed up in the resurrection of jesus everything your hands do it's anointed every place god sends you he'll give you glory he'll give you life he'll give you hope whatever you're dealing with you got to know how bad it is how dark it is it doesn't matter there's hope there's hope there's hope after this somebody shout glory oh there's hope after this there's hope after this after my trial after my suffering make sure you tell the enemy tell yourself there's hope after this hope brought me to it hope's gonna see me through it and there's gonna be hope after this ah oh, saints we're not quitters we're not those that give up we don't give in and bend and fold oh, when oppression comes our way we understand there's hope after this. Oh, I'm holding on to my hope. I got a grip on my hope. And I'm not letting that devil take it. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. Because you've got true hope in a risen Savior. Got up. Those apostles went out and fulfilled their assignments. They walked in their destiny. Walked into their callings. Judas betrayed him. He was replaced with Matthias. They just numbered them again at 12. And they fulfilled the calling in their life. Because their hope was restored. If you're struggling today with hope. We're here today to pray. 
and to let you know that even though Satan may desire to have you and sift you as wheat, sift you as wheat, Jesus has prayed that your faith faint not, that it doesn't fail you. If you're here today, this is the altar call. Come on, ministers.